So, thank you. Hello, good morning. My name is Matthias Locherer. I'm from Qubit and I'm going to present something about real-time spectral imaging and for what it can be used for. Uh, some words to Qubit. We were founded in 2011. We are located in Ulm, in Germany. And we are a manufacturer of multi- and hyperspectral snapshot cameras especially to be used in real-time imaging. And what you see here is our, I think, already well-known model, the Firefly S185. This device integrates two cameras. The first camera is the spectral device with a resolution of 50 by 50 pixels and 125 bands, covering a spectral range from 450 to 950 nanometers. And um, we achieve a frame rate here with from 3 hertz, when it is used on a UAV or up to 17 hertz when used in the laboratory. A second camera is also included. It's a panchromatic camera with a megapixel resolution that can be used to um, identify the surfaces um, in real-time imaging and also for punch sharpening when exporting those images. And the question uh, we think about is who is using hyperspectral cameras and what, what is the benefit of it? Well, on the first point of view, um, hyperspectral cameras provides a lot of colorful, bright looking, um, beautiful, sometimes fancy data. But uh, this is not uh, what we are aiming in the end. So, who needs this data? Uh, there are several applications, as you know, ranging from agriculture over sustainability management and also with a high industrial value in the end. And if you take a look at all these different applications, we can ask what do these groups and people have in common? And they do have in common that they all have a problem for what they need to find a solution. And the solution usually has to do with distinguishing between materials and different surfaces. So it's all about uh, quantification, qualification, classification. So. Um, in a perfect situation, we provide the hardware and the customer in the end finds a solution. But there is a problem. Um, usually it's not so easy. We first need a uh, software application who is capable of solving this problem. This includes development, testing, evaluation and this is often time consuming and this also suffers sometimes from a lack of know-how. So the next question is, can we do something to come towards those customers? And um, yeah, the answer is yes, we can. Um, Pavel Patzlik already introduced yesterday the Mira interface, which is based on PERCLASS. PERCLASS is a classification tool that is based on machine learning and it involves state-of-the-art classifiers that can be arranged in a cascaded system. And uh, we are able to include this to our software environment. So the user, uh, this allows the user to first record spectral images with our software, take those images to the, uh, to the per class environment and create a, a statistical classifier for specific materials. And in the third step, apply this classifier again as plug-in in our software environment. And this is all possible within five minutes. Usually, this looks like this. Um, first, the uh, necessary bands are selected, the best model is identified, um, this model can be tuned, and this model can be exported as plug into the Qubit Util software, and where it can be applied to the, um, um, to the live data. Nevertheless, this still needs that the, uh, the customer that is using it has an idea of mathematical uh, classifiers and has at least some programming skills. So a high understanding is still necessary. In order to overcome this, we can use the Mira interface, as introduced from Pavel yesterday. It's a graphical user interface involving this per class classification. And I would like to show this on a little setup we uh, made in our laboratory. Here you can see in the upper part of the image is the 185. A camera model and below the sample probe which is placed on a turntable and the sample probe is just some herbs like um, chamomile, original and basil. 
And from the camera point of view, it is looking like this. On the left side, you see the panchromatic image on the camera. And on the right side, you see some spectra, which are displaying um, the pixels inside the three rectangles on the left side. And what we see here, that the spectral um, information is kind of similar. And the question is, can we make a distinguishing relatively easy or not? And uh, what we do now, we take this uh, spectral image and bring it to the Mira interface. And we first need to do a training. And um, yeah, now it's running. Uh, we already have seen it yesterday. We simply mark some pixels where we know for sure what is behind, like the herbs. And we also need to define the background in the end so we can distinguish those herbs from the background. And this goes relatively fast, as you can see. We just needed to uh, predefine those classes in the upper um, left corner of the uh, display. The next step then is the model search. And um, the model search is quite easy. We simply click on the model search, but we now have the problem that there are artifacts inside the image. And um, to overcome those artifacts, although the image is quite okay, um, we take a look at the spectral bands. Uh, and the spectral information, and we see that the, especially the first spectral bands usually are a little bit noisy, which is kind of typical for silicon-based sensors. So we simply exclude those bands, the first, I don't know, 20, 25 bands, and the last 10 bands, and then rerun the model search, as you have seen, and the um, result is immediately getting better. However, there still are some wrong classified pixels, especially in the border regions of those shells where the herbs are integrated and um, this is no wonder because of two reasons. First, these are mixed pixels, so they have a mixed spectral information and the second thing is we didn't define a class for it, so maybe we could have overcome this. But there where we have a clear spectral signal, the classification works very well. And the question now, you have seen this is quite fast, can we integrate it now to the, to the software environment? Yes, we can, I already uh, told you. But the question is, does it work um, also when we have several um, different angles of illumination and changing conditions? So what we do now, we simply export this classifier as a common XML file um, and put it into the plug-in folder of our own software environment, we call it HERPS. And then I start the Qubit Touch uh, graphical user interface. This is a live image. I now change to reflectance, which means that white reference and dark is already recorded. And activate the mirror classify. And you see now this is a live image and it works pretty well. And even if I activate this turntable, you can see that um, the classifier still is providing very, very nice results. This is just an example with uh, some herbs in a, in a shell. And, um, but I think this shows very well the potential and the capability of hyperspectral data. Uh, we're always talking about fancy spectral curves and uh, spectral quality, which of course is very important, but sometimes we lose a little bit sight of for what this uh, data is meant for. And um, what you have seen here is we made this classifier just within minutes. And if someone has deeper Problems, I would say, that need to be analyzed. Of course, it takes more time. Um, you can invest more time to find a solution, but um, I think this overcomes the lack of, of, of knowledge that is necessary. Knowledge, what is hyperspectral data, how to handle it. Knowledge about programming skills uh, with Pavel, uh, Pavel's tools. We can overcome this part. Um, knowledge lacks of mathematical skills. So, um, in the end, the application should be in the, in the middle of the yeah, um, analysis. So, um, I have 25 seconds left. Um, I hope you have all um, a good day today. <laughs> and I uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>